tell you what, there was a time in my life where I married a lovely Indonesian Canadian. I loved her with my whole soul. You guys have seen her in the videos. Her name's Ivana. But evidently, I'm now married to a beautiful Pakistani lady. Ivana, please show your outfit. So lovely. So Pakistani style. Sandals with the straps. Beautiful flowing. And the hair dyed. Looking very beautiful. My new Pakistani bride. <laughs> My new Pakistani bride. How do you say beautiful in Urdu? Beautiful in Urdu, you say uh, Ivana. No, I'm kidding. You say <laughs> you say khubsurat. Khubsurat. Yeah. Ivana, you look khubsurat. Khubsurat. I love the Pakistani outfit. <laughs> so introducing okay. Jahan Zabe, our tour guide for today, as we for the first time ever go around Karachi. Let's go. Lots to learn. Steve. Who's that? Muhammad Ali Jina. All right. Not Iqbal. <laughs> <laughs> Special place. I'm not Pakistani, but I'm humbled. The best breakfast in Pakistan, if you ask me. <laughs> Paratha and egg. Oh yeah, you love it. Alright, first stop, the People's Square, which is a huge walking area cleared out by cars. It's pedestrians only. Unfortunately, a little bit of garbage today. I think we've actually come earlier than the cleanup crew. I guess they clean it every day, but we're here bright and early. And here is a beautiful gateway to Burns Park. So I guess the idea is most of people in Karachi are walking by necessity. Obviously huge population and very crowded, but there's been an effort to try and make people start to walk by choice. And something like this certainly does that. As well as there's a beautiful bit of street art over there, which has some key locations in Karachi, which contain a bit of foreshadowing because a lot of those buildings we'll go and see later on today. So, so far so good. All right, second stop is Denso Hall Walking Street. There's an incredible before and after photo up here. You can almost hear the horns and feel the air pollution in the before photo. And nowadays it's incredibly green and incredibly well designed and well preserved. So right off the top, there are these circular tiles in the floor that are embossed with landmarks, probably some of which we will see later on in this video. A little bit more foreshadowing here. And I guess women played a vital role in the uh, preparation of these terracotta tiles. And they've done an incredible thing where they've intentionally scraped off uh, maybe paint or potentially some parged concrete to reveal the beautiful and original and often more than 100 years old uh, stone structures that line the very historic and very quiet and sort of fresh street because of all the greenery and I tell you what we've been on this tour for like an hour I can already see the incredible value of going on a tour with someone like Jahan Zeb. he's born and raised in Karachi he seems to know everything and places like this make Karachi very manageable for me as you guys can imagine coming here for the first time I was a bit overwhelmed. There's a serious dust reality of Karachi, as well as the noise and the air pollution. And yet in here, uh, you can't hear any horns. You can hear birds cawing. It's very quiet. It's very respectable. It's uh, quickly becoming my favorite spot in all of Karachi. And it's only nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, tour has just begun. So uh, really loving it. And really some, for my eyes, hidden gems of Karachi. So let's keep going. Assalamu alaikum. Chai. Oh yeah. T T. Summer dust. T E A. Yeah, T. I tell you what, everybody. Here's the real life before and after photo. This is the walking tour, as you can see, the walking path. Very historic, very clean, and very beautiful. And where the path ends, you've got what it was. Uh, so what a big change here in Karachi. And what's great about Pakistan is there's action and something interesting for me happening everywhere you look. Even this, a gigantic stack of watermelons right beside me in a bag. <laughs> something happening everywhere. Assalamu alaikum. So uh, really nice place for a walking tour. And especially here with the old and the new, sort of, sort of beautiful. Yeah, love it.
right, after a brief stop at the Meriwether Tower, we've come to the walking path along the old customs house. Very quiet, very serene, and very beautiful. And there is a little quote here that I think sums up our whole morning. This project is dedicated to the city of Karachi and its people with the hope that it will serve as a stepping stone towards reclaiming public spaces, leading to peace, and as an initiative to restore the historical neighborhoods of Karachi. Could not have said it better myself. So with that, the calm and relaxing part of our tour is over, and we're about to go into the markets and into the beautiful chaos as it were so uh tie up your shoes and buckle up let's go i'll tell you what everybody stay tuned for the bus video everywhere we look we got these really interesting buses we're hoping to uncover some secrets or some information as to why the buses are so beautiful and trucks too all right first things first let's eat the best breakfast in Pakistan, if you ask me. <laughs> Paratha and egg. Oh yeah, you top, love those. Top breakfast in Pakistan. That's right. Nice. At Quetta Darbar Cafe in this very... I was gonna say busy, but it's not that busy today. I guess it's because it's Saturday. It's a little bit more quiet. Alright, let's eat some breakfast. Oh, this is chai. Assalamu alaikum. Let's eat everybody. Mm. Paratha and egg and chickpeas. Uh, chanas. Chanas. Chana chat. No. No, this is just chanas. Chanas. Yeah. Yeah. Ivana loves chickpeas. Mm. They're really good. It's the best I've had. For me, wow. for me, paratha and egg is go to. Yep. Simple flavors and very, very good. And maybe actually, as we eat, you can give me a brief description of your company. You're from Karachi, born and raised. Yes. What are yeah. you trying to do? What is your intention with, uh, you know, showing people your lovely city? So, I mean, the intention behind Super Smart. So, uh, this started off with a friend and uh, it, was the, uh, it was a unique experience for me to be able to kind of interact with the city myself. Mm -hmm. And I think the intention behind Super Smart over the last eight years that it's been running has been to show people a different side to Karachi. Um, I tell people Karachi is often misunderstood right. and um, you don't really know a place to actually get out and experience it. Right. Walk the streets, meet the people, eat the food, learn the stories. That's what we've kind of wanted to do uh, with Super Smart. Fantastic. Awesome. Well, you've definitely done that so far. Yes, Although so the far. tour is only half over. And I tell you what, I think I'm going to ask you to teach me how to walk. <laughs> because you're so well spoken, man. <laughs> I appreciate I think when I speak, I think a lot of the audience is wondering what the heck I'm talking about. You speak so well, and the information is coming so clearly it to us. So knowledgeable. To be clear, it's a very information dense tour. There's lots coming at us. But because John Zabe is so good, it's not just a list of facts, it's like sharing personal accounts of the city. Yes. Very memorable, very good tour. Yes. I've said it before, uh, on a small tour group, the quality of the tour guide is the quality of the tour. And in this instance, very, very good tour. Yeah, I appreciate it. Very, very, very good tour. Thank you guys. So with that being said, let's eat let's and eat. let's uh, oh continue the tour. Honestly. You're going to love the paratha, Ivana. The paratha is very, very, very like uh, crispy. crispy on the outside. Um, it's like, just like a good combo. I love this chickpeas. Yeah, you're a fan of chickpeas. It's so good. It's so flavorful. Let's eat. And not too spicy. With a nice glass of chai. Wow, Ivana, you look like a Pakistani lady. <laughs> a bit of a fail. A bit of a fail. Mm. This is good. All right, uh, let's eat one of the best meals in Pakistan: so paratha and egg, especially for breakfast. Guys, just dig right in. I'm still learning the one hand grip. I think it's, it's better, pretty good. It's you better look, than it was before. You look like a local. If I'm not showing your face, just your hand, you could be a local ripping the hoos for us. Good, good. <laughs> Those are good, Steve. Try it. The china? Very good. Yeah. Very good. 
Shukriya. Bot Shukriya. Yes, yes. How do you say five stars in. I mean, five stars would technically be. When you're saying Zabardas, you're saying, you're saying great. Okay, same, same. So Zabardas. Is, is, is pretty much the same thing. Okay, good. So in that, in that, in that case, Zabardas. <laughs> All right, introducing the Empress Market, which is one of the biggest and oldest indoor markets in all of Karachi. And it's actually named after Queen Victoria, who previously was the Empress of Karachi. But first things first, I've got to show you right across the street from the market, there's a guy over here with a crowd around his store and he's got a microphone and he's auctioning off electronics with a loudspeaker. And he's got 10 or 15 people around. Uh, this is sort of the nature of these kind of tours. Uh, obviously the tourist attraction is the huge market, but just along the way, because Jahan Zeb knows everything, he goes, hey look, there's an auction happening right there in public. So. Uh, very interesting and just sort of a uh, natural happenstance occurrence. So with that being said, let's go check out the uh, market. Check your phone. Wow. This is the sign saying about... Uh, oh, the Queen. Uh, queen Victoria. Right, Empress Market. Wow. And I can already smell what I would guess are some fresh spices. Oh good. yeah. Yeah. Cool. Look at this. Already rice and lentils and beans, lots of nuts, all the nuts, fresh veggies. Wow. Oh, I guess it's inside a building, but in the middle it's an open space, but they have covered it with tents on top. Let's see. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Look at this. What? Oh, I think these are fake. Uh, and smells corn. amazing over here, no, Ivana? Dates. Yeah, Lots of dates. Coconuts. What is it? Uh, you first. Oh. John Zabe's favorite. Salted, roasted cashew nuts. Okay. Oh, you're going to love it. Mm. Very good. Very good. Want to buy? Yeah. First item so far. <laughs> First item we try, we're going to buy already. Amazing. Classic so, tourist. Uh, um, uh, the bag that's that big is about quarter kilo. Sure. 250 grams. Yep. Or something like that. Sure. Um, if you want more, you can get more. Um, yeah, perfect. Like a kilo lasts for me over a month and a half or so. Yeah, this is good for us. Yeah. Yeah, good. So they make you a fresh one right now. Okay, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Hey, Even better. Shukriya. So very nice staff here letting us try everything. Hmm. Good. The nuts they're all fresh and crunchy. Mm -hmm. You know? Very fresh. Mm -hmm. Also, also the sight and the smell of the market, of the store here. It's one of the best uh, sales pitches. Yeah. Just the visual. Pistachio. Pistachio is very good too. Very good. Feel free to buy Ivana. This is a good place to spend some money because it's fresh and it's good and it's local. Let's buy a pistachio too. Can. Look at Ivana. She looks so local, doesn't she? From behind, Ivana looks 100% local. The outfit. The hair looks like a million bucks. Or maybe 280 million rubies. Oh, saffron from Iran. Let me smell Just take it. Take a whiff, it's very strong. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Wow. It smells very good. Saffron from Iran. I just don't know what to use it for. <laughs> you use it for biryani, Ivana. <laughs> biryani. You use it for a lot of different dishes. Yeah. <laughs> it's nice. It smells nice. good, right? Yeah, very good. Very good. <laughs> How much is that one? Uh, about 1800 rupees. 1800 rupees. Like ah, six, seven okay, USD. okay. All right. We're just gonna buy the nuts for now. Yep, go for it. How much is it? Uh, about uh, yeah, about uh, maybe 1700. 1700. Yep. All right. For both. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. So 1700 yeah, for the nuts. <clears throat> Very good. Shukriya. Bye bye. Thank you. All right. Let's go around some more. Check out this market.
All right, so we're about to enter into the real hectic, real local market. But first things first, name of the company that built the staircase, okay? Karachi, 1889. So this staircase is pushing 130 years old. And uh, it would lead me to believe that the whole market is roughly that old. Yes. That seriously so. historic and seriously action packed. So let's go explore. <laughs> So if you fry these, these pop up and become these crunchy rings. Ah. So as kids, ah. they're like chips almost, mm -hmm. like fried chips. They'll pop up to like that big. Mm -hmm. Be careful, watermelons behind you guys. Watermelon, careful. It's watermelon season. This is the Himalayan rock salt, which would really go for a premium in Canada. Seriously useful and seriously expensive stuff. I tell you what, from the outside looking in, this market looks a bit overwhelming. But in here, it's surprisingly organized. You guys can hear the audio. It's not very loud. Uh, it's relatively clean, believe it or not. The floor itself is uh, pretty clean. And uh, everyone's sort of shopping quietly. I'm surprised how comfortable I am. I thought this might overwhelm me and make me feel like out of place. But I'm walking around with the camera and nobody's even staring at me. I feel like I'm a fly on the wall. Wow. Talk about a beautiful booth here. No color editing required on the footage. So photogenic. So beautiful. I guess you can buy the individual spices or he can mix them for you yeah. and make masala. masala. Yeah, curry powder, biryani masala. Biryani masala. Chicken masala. Chicken masala. Garam masala powder. Garam mas pepper. Good, your store is so beautiful. Spice. Zavadas. Thank you. Wow. This is uh, one kilo rice and the ones are in the box. Karachi biryani. Yeah. One kilo rice, two tablespoons. Normal. One kilo rice, two tablespoons, Karachi biryani. Normal. Spicy, one kilo rice, four tablespoons. Okay. <laughs> Maybe we should buy one and try. It can be a, it can be a effort-free sure. biryani recipe. Sure. One kilo rice, two tablespoons. Okay, okay. How much? Do, uh, I will buy. Rupees. One fifty rupees. Oh, salt. It's a good price. Thank you. Yeah, good. It's good. Thank you. I, I I had to buy something. This store is so beautiful. I had to buy something. Karai masala, chicken masala. Chicken masala. Yeah. It's different like spice rubs. This one. Oh. Chicken masala. Tasty. Tasty one, tasty one. Don't be shy. Chicken masala. Woohoo! Spice. Very flavorful. Not spicy. It's a little bit of spice. Got a sharp it's good. Kick. Because <laughs> you're putting the spice directly in the mouth. True, yeah. true. Yeah. There's no chicken in there to. Yeah. Uh... What's this? This muka taste. It's got taste. Oh, yeah. Looks sweet. It's, it's plump. Oh, plum. It's a plum seed. Uh, it's just, it's sour. Oh. It's just to like kick the taste of what you just had. Cameron. Oh, it's like they clean the tongue from all the spice. So this is, the, this is the... Ye usi ka hua na? Usi ka paste hai. Alu bukhara ka juice hai ye. Isko upar chutney jo lagi hui hai. Ye alu bukhara ki... Alu bukhara ka chilke hai, usko khush ko ho. Khush ko gaya. So this is, it's sour because it's got like the juicy, dry yes. jelly plum on the seed. Ah. So people use this like in biryani tamarind. a lot. You get, this Good. is tossed into the biryani. Like sour plum? Yeah. Tastes like tamarind. Tastes like tamarind. Okay. Thank you. 200, okay. No, no, no. It's okay. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Honest guy. Okay, uh, you got the spice? Oh, almost forgot the spice. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> thank you, shukriya. I tell you what, everywhere I point the camera, so beautiful. And evidently, these are the baby mangoes, unripe mangoes that have fallen off the tree. And this is evidence that uh, mango season is coming soon. These are the ones that are a bit premature, but they're in the market just because they've fallen off the tree. And I guess in a month or two, it will be mango season. Hopefully, Ivana and I get our visa extension because I love mango and I want to be here for mango season. It's actually the plum. I kind of like it. So get it. Yeah, buy it. Yeah, buy it. Get it. So we want it. It's almost like a candy. It's like yeah. sweet or like sour. Sour candy. Sour this candy. Tamarind for me. Okay, Ivana. Good stop at the store. Yes. 
<laughs> Yo, Ivana, your outfit, I hate to keep repeating myself, your outfit looks so good in the surrounding environment. It's nice because it's breezy, for, it's very hot, so it's very light. Yes, it's clothes designed for the, designed. the fashion, but also the function. Yes. <laughs> very good. This is... Um, these are the different kinds of oils. Juice or oh, oil? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I see. If you want to smell some of these, you can. Um, so what, what type of oil? Like, what, like, for example... So there's almond oil, coconut oil, um, ah. coriander oil. Almond oil. Rose. Oh, I so see. Then, this must be the machine yeah. to make the oil. This is, yeah. And then it's crushed and it comes out of here. You see that? It leaks out of there. The almond oil. Oh, it, it drops out here. Right, right, right. That's so nice. Almond oil. Can I smell? Sure. Be careful. Oh, it smells good. It smells nice. And so you would use it for like cooking or or drinking. Hair. Or hair. hair to massage. Oh, I'm so wrong. I have no hair. I didn't know. I didn't but know. If you want to like massage, <laughs> you're good. If you want to like just rub it in. Oh, I see. Get, like a hot massage. So Interesting. Press, press. Fresh pressed almond oil I right here in the market. All the oils that you have here uh, growing up. Over here, people, uh, we've always had our hair oiled. It's something just to keep your hair healthy and keep it nice and thick. That's so, so high. Yeah. We see Pakistani have beautiful hair. <laughs> yeah. That's the secret. Oil. Dude, oil. you're I'm telling me? You're telling me, Ivona, I could have saved my hair with oil, almond oil? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> They're laughing. Maybe, maybe I'll go back. <laughs> maybe, yeah, I should buy something and see if my hair goes maybe back. Maybe I'll go back. <laughs> <laughs> shukriya, shukriya. So nice, guys. <laughs> This is primarily the market. If you guys want to see any of the other side stores, you can. But uh, primarily, that was the space. That was a great market tour. Yes. That was so awesome. <laughs> that was great. Good guy. Good guy. Good guy. Jahan Zeb. Jahan Zeb. Good. My friend. Jahan Zeb. His friend? And my friend too. <laughs> so nice. The guy sitting down says, John Zeb, good guy, good guy, good guy. <laughs> so nice. I tell you what, guys, the proof is in the pudding. It's my opinion, and even the locals agree. John Zeb, good guy. <laughs> One of the more surprising aspects of Karachi, or even Pakistan in general for that matter, is the diversity. So we just passed, I believe, St. Peter's Cathedral, a massive Christian. Cathedral we were planning on stopping, but I think we'll end up doing an entire video section on Christianity In Karachi, so stay tuned for that. But in the meantime, we have come to this very interesting room here Billiards room which has a beautiful surrounding garden all around it Which is empty right now, but you can imagine it being uh, Very useful with the pool and the beautiful flowers beside and it belongs to the Parsi Institute of Karachi. Now Parsi in this context more or less means Persian and this entire place belongs to the Zoroastrian community. Now if you've never heard of Zoroastrianism, I believe it's the oldest monotheistic religion in the world and it's sort of the precursor to a lot of the uh, monotheistic religions of today. So you can imagine this place for 103 years people playing billiards here and enjoying the grounds. Uh, Non-Islamic people, non-Hindu people, but still very much part of the community. Uh, there's big statues out front of Zoroastrian Parsi people who have really contributed to the infrastructure and the development of Karachi. And one of the more interesting things here is the cricket connection of the Parsi people. So in the back, there's a cricket pitch it's a little bit run down right now but it is the site of the historic 499 runs which i think is a prideful moment for any pakistani person the most cricket runs ever scored without being called out so one of the more surprising aspects for us has been the diversity i think when people think of pakistan they think of islam but there's many communities christian zoroastrian even hindu all sort of contributing to the beautiful city of karachi so something new for us Tell you what, some of the best parts of this tour is just riding in the back seat of the car and having John Zip narrate what's going on out the windows. I feel like the window here is like a TV screen and it's endlessly entertaining because there's so much action and when you have someone like John Zip, there's so much details and so much interesting uh, insight that for me I wouldn't get without him. 
so it's really nice to just sit in the air-conditioned car. We've got the driver here doing a good job, which gives John Zabe our full attention. And uh, we just kind of watch out the TV screens from the air-conditioned car. It's a really nice ride in between each uh, stop. It's really nice. Yeah, sightseeing. Yeah. Oh, All right, yeah. some salty lemonade <laughs> to replenish the system on a hot day. Right, electrolyte. Oh, just nice. Not sweet at all. Very Technically refreshing. lemonade, but mm -hmm. uh, not so sweet. Mm -hmm. And salt in there, very good. Ooh, yeah. Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm rejuvenated. <laughs> <laughs> now we're in this lovely cafe, mm -hmm. which is actually in an old house, and it's called TDF Gar. TDF stands for the Dawood Foundation. Uh, Dawood is a very rich and well connected family. So inside, it's a bit of a museum as well as a cafe here and sort of keeps with our theme of the surprising diversity in Karachi because this is one of the only houses in the area that's quite old still well preserved and functioning as a museum with some interesting artifacts inside yeah. and also some very good lemonade that's true with salt it's a cafe and also a cultural if, uh, space you can hold your events yes. here yes yeah. very nice very nice space. rejuvenating us for the last leg of our tour right let's go Karachi Street Entertainers in the 1930s. Whoa, that is no joke. Whoa. Whoa. It's like uh, Whoa. Vlad the Impaler, no? <laughs> Lots of interesting photographs. Yeah, no kidding. Old photographs here. Wow. And just off the balcony, we can see the mausoleum with actually the Green Line uh, bus ray. So this is a dedicated road just for buses, BRT as they call it. And this is a very famous mausoleum. All right, introducing the mausoleum of Muhammad Ali Jinnah, the founder and the first prime minister of Pakistan. It's borrowing some architectural elements from Central Asia. It's equipped with armed guards, a massive chandelier, domed roof, and all around generally spotless and quiet and serene. Special place. I'm not Pakistani, but I'm humbled. Thank you. Which is quite beautiful and you can see the pink bus beneath it, which is a ladies only bus, which is sort of an interesting concept. So uh, yet another good stop where we could replenish with a cold drink uh, as a way to get some energy Woo! to continue the tour. The sun is coming out and we're going <laughs> to uh, two more stops before we can uh, tuck back into the AC in our accommodation. Right. All right, let's go. Believe it or not, our next stop is in this building here. Pioneer Book House. One of the oldest bookstores in all of Karachi. And I tell you what, even crossing the road was a bit of an adventure. Head on a swivel. <laughs> Let's go. The revolutionary theory and the Marxist views the challenge faced by the Marxist views and revolutionary theory in Pakistan. Book about communism, more or less, about Marxism, and also for me, backwards. Yeah, my my book's right. open this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So I guess uh, Urdu is written right to left. It is written right to left. So interesting. So I guess it's kind of like a law bookstore. 
Got some interesting titles and yo, a lot of dust, man. This is like the real deal, <laughs> original bookstore. Yvonne, I would go for this because it fits in our bag. Yeah. If you like it, I can keep it here. You can pick it up on your way. It's this nice, can no? fold completely. It's uh, it's Make printed on canvas. canvas. Yeah. Yeah. So it'll prevent the folds that generally come in with paper. Emperor's Market. Check. Right there. We can check off the place we've been. Yes. Check off a bunch check. of stuff. We saw the the moss. We didn't go, From but we can check. Outside, yes. Wow, we'll go to Mohata Palace. Check, later. coming soon. Very nice. I would buy, Ivana. You wanna, you wanna buy? Yeah. Sure. Twenty-five hundred rupees, like ten bucks. Yeah. Nice Good souvenir. Time. Post it on your wall in your house. Yes, I like it. It's nice. So far, all sold. From here is well. What's the What's the name of this <laughs> dance? It's called a mujra. Mujra. M U G R A. Culturally, I mean, it's something that is frowned upon but exists. Um, like so this. it's a bit of a strip tease. I can tell you this kid's loving it. Oh, but the story is, it's often done by a transgender because women are not allowed to do this. Oh. Or not like, it's not encouraged. Generally. It's not encouraged generally. Uh, so you often yeah. see transgender people doing it. So. Something new. Story. Wow. In an old bookstore. It's not normalized, that practice. It's not normalized. It happens. It exists. Fair. Yeah. Look at this. Look at the dust. I can honestly say I would never end up here if it wasn't for this tour. <laughs> I'm glad. Interesting, no? Yeah, interesting. Good souvenirs, interesting photos, it's like and, spot. and the most thing. dusty books you've ever seen. I feel like we're on a very private tour. Yeah. Like we're on a VIPs only tour. Yeah. Very nice. All right. So, which one was the book? It was this one. So this is an old book from 1907, printed in Calcutta with the, you know, officially by the government, uh -huh. um, showing you the uh, linguistic survey of India. And it's talking about certain linguistic groups that exist. Desi, over there. Wow. I mean, can I'm I go not, through it or it's just like you can, a... you can go through it. It's a bit uh, torn up, but... You can see it. it's a full breakdown. It's like a heavy study of these linguistic groups and what they do and what they say. Indo-Aryan family of languages. <laughs> I guess there's a lot of languages, and especially previously, there was a lot of languages in Pakistan. Uh, 100%. Even to this day, probably yeah, hundreds of languages. Pakistan has hundreds of languages. I, I can't give you the exact number, but I've, I've read the amount of languages. So there's a lot of regional languages, uh -huh. um, apart from the main provincial languages that we know. Punjabi, Sindhi, Balochi, right. etc. We know that. Yeah. But there's a lot of regional languages within that. Different districts, different areas have their own dialects. Uh -huh. um, it's very diverse. Hmm. And I think that's... Yeah, the no country. kidding. Yeah, absolutely right. Wow. I'll tell you what, Steve. Hopefully next year, we'll come back again. Inshallah. <laughs> Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs> I tell you what. That's very helpful for tourists, yes, that sign. Very and actually, this bookstore was really great, but I gotta be honest, it's hot in here. <laughs> and dusty and sweaty. <laughs> but it's cool, it's kind of like half like their own personal collection and half for sale, and it's like depending on the seller if they want to sell you the book or not. You know? Yes. Yeah. He might say it's free to look, but you cannot take it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this but is a cool. neat it's place. A cool That's yeah. a good part of a tour, I think. Very old. Yeah. Hidden gem. Hidden gem is right. Preserving the story of the martyrs and the martyr palaces. This look very familiar in the heritage of where they were from to where they came to. So, as much as this might be. All right, introducing Mohatta Palace, which has these two stones, this sort of color scheme, and these colors are all around Karachi. The white would be a sandstone that's locally sourced, and the more red one would be from Rajasthan. If you guys remember way back in our India videos, uh, that redstone is all over Rajasthan. So this building looks absolutely beautiful and the two colors are really sort of iconic in Karachi.
my goodness this ground is really is beautiful from the white peacock here they have a fountain and a garden leading up to the uh, entrance of the palace and this is a contrast between modern and old because behind the palace they're building what is about to be the tallest building in Pakistan right there interesting by the around back with their wow uh, uh, on the top of the dome yeah All right, unfortunately, no photo or video allowed inside the museum because a lot of what's in there is never before seen stuff that you'll only find in the museum. So I respect their wishes. What I can tell you is a lot of the museum is about Muhammad Ali Jinnah, who was in fact the first prime minister of Pakistan. In a previous video, I got him mixed up with Iqbal, who was the poet who sort of dreamt up the idea of Pakistan. I have to remember Iqbal, mustache, Jinnah, hat. This is my uh, way to remember. So what I didn't realize is Jinnah was only the prime minister for something like a year or maybe 13 or 14 months. Unfortunately, he passed away in 1948. But in that short amount of time, he really left a legacy because um, the whole museum has photos of him and it's really presented in a beautiful way. There seem to be some museums that just get it and just do a great job of presenting the information and this particular museum is one of those so this is Jenna here and throughout the museum there's tons of photos like this and they tell the story of uh, what he did in such a short amount of time and how beloved he is I would really recommend the museum um, really really well done and really really elaborate and beautiful everything from the floor to the wall to the ceiling uh, really elaborate and beautiful now in conclusion of our video I'd like to give you some rapid fire things I noticed about Karachi. One, it is dusty, <laughs> but you will get used to it. When I first came here, my nose was stuffed. I right. almost was like allergic to the dust, but take some allergy medication and True. you'll be on the right track. True. Yes. Two, I hope Karachi people can learn. Carbonated water is the trick. Very hard to find carbonated water. It's so hot, it's so dry. They sell water or they sell 7-Up. I could really go for a ice cold carbonated water. Yes, yes. Small From piece Marie. of advice. Oh, they do have Murray carbonated <laughs> water, which is very good. Uh, but other than that, cannot find it. Uh, another thing I noticed was every once in a while in Karachi, there seems to be a smell of sulfur in the air. Mm. And it comes and goes. When we went to the market, right. for example, on the way in, it smelled fine. On the way out, there was this scent of sulfur. I'm not sure what it's from. If someone can explain to me, I'd like to know. <laughs> because it sort of comes and goes. And lastly, but not least, uh, I've been learning to love this place. Yeah, yeah. This is only my first time actually going around Karachi and uh, thank God for Jehan absolutely right because without him I would be lost especially yes because we are kind of shy right yes like we're kind of like we don't go out there and just start talking to people so we're kind of shy so we are happy to have this experience because Karachi is a big city and it can be overwhelming for us yes so big you know shout out that? to Jahan Zeb. I think yeah. he knows everybody in Karachi and their brother <laughs> <laughs> is Mr. Karachi himself is very very helpful for our uh, tour very and helpful. for our first experience in Karachi yes yes and we'll last but not least lot. I'd like to end this video by saying I have officially loved milk chai I'm not gonna say milk, milk chai. chai is better than coffee huh? but I sometimes crave a nice cup of chai yeah chai is very nice when very I first nice. had it I was a bit nervous Ooh. because the milk stays on top it's like a dry layer you kind of have to scoop rid of that mm -hmm. off so it threw me off at first but I've been learning to love milk chai milk chai and also I've, I heard this. We haven't explored the food scene in Karachi, but I heard that Karachi has the best food in Pakistan. I don't know. I heard. All you right. Know? <laughs> Stay tuned for the biryani vlog, everybody. Yes, yes, yes. Karachi biryani. Today we got a little taste of Karachi. It, so next time we know where to go and uh, how to approach things. You know what I mean? Fantastic. Yes. Thanks again, bro. Thank you guys. The best. The best. All right. Later, everybody.